folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and your wish is finally granted because I'm going to be reviewing an animated classic from 1992, yep, came out in theaters on November 25th, which is called, as we speak, Aladdin, yep, just came out recently on Blu-ray and DVD, that's a diamond edition, that has some new extras, along with some of the previous extras from the Platinum Edition DVD that came out in 2004. Yep, and it has a new high definition transfer, which unfortunately got released uh, two years ago from the Blu ray that was released overseas. Yeah, so unfortunately, we end up waiting until two years. But not only that, but we can finally got new extras that's on the back. Yep, which includes. Uh, New Genie Outtakes featuring the late great comedian and actor Robin Williams. Yep, it even has uh, the Genie 101 and and some features involving the the new uh, Broadway musical for Aladdin. Yeah, and all this other stuff. And then, yep, that's pretty much what you get. Now, um, my only problem was though was that even though it had most of the extras from the Platinum Edition, the only thing that's missing is the interactive games and, of course, a few chapters of the Diamond and the Roth, the making of Aladdin. Yep. So that's enough for me to get really, you know, devastated because I could have had gotten the Platinum Edition just for those extras alone. But that also leads to another problem which I don't like. Because Disney could have had at least had the decency to remove two unnecessary music videos for this Blu-ray release alone instead of removing four chapters of the making of Aladdin. You know, that documentary that they had. It, because to me, that just seems like they're pretty much ruining everything that they went for. Because of all the work that they put up for this uh, documentary. I mean, come on. They, they deserve better than that. But uh, anyway, I was talking about the, the two music videos that should have never been there in the first place. Which, back in 2004, uh, they had two stars. Well, I'll make that free. Yeah, one was the American Idol winner, It's another reason why I don't watch American Idol, named Clay Aiken, and he winds up doing what's supposedly a new deleted song that's supposed to make it into the film called Proud of Your Boy. Yeah, it was supposed to be a sad song that was actually done by Alan Minkin and Howard Ashman, you know, before Ashman passed away, you know, due to uh, a complication of AIDS. Yeah, this was like something that they were going to leave it in into the film, but unfortunately, you know, that all got cut. And then, of course, they even included a then new recording of A Whole New World with, get this, Jessica Simpson and Nick Leckley. Yep, who at the time were just, you know, a couple before they, you know, they split up and they move on and, ugh. I'm sorry, but I just cannot buy that in a film like Aladdin. But I'm glad that they left out um, the original music video with Regina Bell and People Bryson, because that's the real deal. I'd rather have that than two unnecessary music videos that should have never been there in the first place. And that's the problem. That's probably the main reason why I didn't get the Platinum Edition. But I know my mistake. I should have picked it up a long time ago if I knew something was missing. So maybe, <laughs> who knows, because it's not going to be easy to get the, the Platinum Edition already since already on Amazon.com and other sites, they, they have it for like a higher price. And Oh, brother. God, unless of stores like Goodwill and all these other thrift stores out there, yeah, even Salvation Army that has copies of them, I mean, I know... It, if it's so rare to find, then yes, I'll definitely pick it up. But I'm cool with this for now. The Blu-ray looks amazing. You know, it's probably the best transfer it ever looked, even though it could have been 
the aspect ratio that I expected it to be originally. They, they changed it to simply 185 instead of uh, 166. So that was the problem. But it's cool. Anyway, um, I want to get to the review. It stars Robin Williams as the genie with Scott Reinger from the TV show Full House, Linda Larkin, Jonathan Friedman, Frank Welker, Gilbert Gottfried, and Douglas Seal, you know, who has been in the film Ernest Saves Christmas, you know, played Santa Claus. It's written and directed by Ron Clemens and John Musker, you know, the same team behind The Little Mermaid. The movie begins where we focus on the peddler who's just going around selling some gifts and everything while he was singing the song Arabian Night while riding on a camel. Yeah, he wants up retrieving a magical old lamp where he actually tells the, the legend of how it all began where we get to meet an evil grand visor of Sultan named Jafar along with his trusty assistant, a talking parrot named Yago, who wants up in the sands of Agraba attempts to retrieve the old lamp that contains the genie inside from the cave of wonders. Yeah, it happens to be a giant tiger you now that's actually done in beautiful CGI where he basically yells WHO DISTURBS MY SLUMBER? Yeah. He hires a petty thief to enter the cave just to retrieve it but unfortunately, his attempt failed. That's when Jafar and Yago had learned that only the diamond in the rough can enter the cave. That's what leads to, as we speak, a street rat named Aladdin, along with his monkey pet Abu, you know, goes around, you know, getting into trouble by stealing a loaf of bread, you know, and try to escape from all the guards who's going after him and all that. Well, that's when, um, when we get to meet the, the Sultan daughter named Jasmine, you know, who's very frustrated with her life, you know, mostly because of that law involving that that a daughter must be married um, to a handsome prince on her birthday. So, unfortunately, she ran away and winds up um, inside Agrabah's marketplace where she meets Aladdin as well as Abu. So the two began to form a friendship together, you know, talking about what's going on and how they both feel completely trapped. But then all of a sudden, Jafar had ordered Aladdin to be captured, you know, by the guards, and Jasmine orders him to have him release. But of course, Jafar tricks him into thinking Aladdin was sentenced to death. So already with, with Jafar disguised as an elderly old man, he actually released Aladdin and Abu from a dungeon that leads to the Caves of Wonders, promising a reward to return in order to retrieve the lamp. So the cave allows them to enter but instructs them to touch nothing but the lamp. So once uh, Aladdin and Abu had found a magic carpet, which, yeah, basically the carpet had tricked Abu, <laughs> as we speak, he finally attains the lamp, but unfortunately Abu attempts to steal a small red gem that's already been on onto the statue of an ape, which sadly, by the time you know he, he put it back, the entire uh, cave had melted into hot lava, it was collapsing. So then Aladdin and Abu had, tr had finally escaped by going onto the magic carpet and they're just riding around until they finally entered uh, you know where Jafar is so of course Aladdin had to take the uh, the lamp to uh, Jafar which unfortunately was threatening to kill him after that for that particular reward so then Abu steals the lamp from Jafar and they both fell into the cave as we know it so then, uh, already inside the cave, Aladdin rubs the lamp and unfortunately unleashes, as we speak, the genie. 
of the lamp. But yeah, once he finally got out of the lamp, he says, Oi! Ten thousand years will give you such a crick in the neck. <laughs> yeah, and then he just... Uh, <laughs> he takes his head and just rolls around and bam. Yeah, and let's face it, you know, the genie is just hilarious in this movie. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He is the main star of Aladdin. I mean, yeah, Rob Williams definitely uh, put some heart to it. I mean, he definitely was the right choice to play the genie. Because he can do a lot of thousand voices, you know, disguised as all the famous actors out there, like Peter Lorre, Groucho Marx, you know, as well as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, Senior Hall, Rodney Dangerfield, um, you name it. I mean, a lot of that. And then he does all this other stuff, too. He even has a song... A Friend Like Me, which is another favorite I love, too. He actually reveals Aladdin to give him, granted, free wishes, with the exception of murder, romance, and the revival of the dead. Or, of course, additional wishes alone. So, of course, Aladdin tricks the genie into magically freeing himself. So, a boo in the carpet from the caves without actually granting a wish. They actually... Uh, would not receive any more magic help unless he explicitly states, I wish. So then they finally escape by going straight into an island, you know, into the sands of Aquaba, where, you know, he already granted uh, one wish, and that is to become Prince Ali of Ababra. Yeah. And this is the kind of wish he would actually get in order for him to, to meet. Uh, and be able to fall in love with Jasmine, since she's already, of course, the princess. I mean, his plan almost worked, granted, but of course, that's what leads to a lot of problems as we speak, you know, mostly with Jafar and all of that, and already with Jasmine feeling left down because of that law. So Aladdin didn't want to, you know, to tell her the truth, because even if he did try to, that's that pretty much would ruin, you know, the whole friendship with each other. Yeah, but that's kind of what it was backfiring. You know, Aladdin decided to take Jasmine on a magic carpet ride to the song A Whole New World, where they just spin around the entire world, you know, looking at a, a completely beautiful uh, view of what Aquaba really looks like. You know, they just ride around, you see a lot of horses, you know, Grab some clouds, everything. Yeah. So anyway, uh, once they finally returned, that's when Aladdin was captured by the guards. You know, mostly because of Jafar, because he wants to, you know, dumping the Aladdin out in the, into the ocean once he was knocked out, all tied up. While suddenly, the genie finally arrived and saved his life. And Jafar was already attempting to marry Jasmine, as we speak, and then. That's when they found out what happened, you know, since they they almost had Aladdin killed and Jafar actually who actually hypnotized the Sultan after all all this time and yep and that's when we found out that Jafar of course is the traitor. So he disappeared and then you know the Sultan decided to grant it Aladdin to become the new prince of Aquaba. Only one problem was that he's been chosen to become the next sultan. And yeah, that's what leads to a lot of problems because unfortunately he rejected uh, you know, the genie's uh, last offer to be you know, to freedom and all, all of that, you know, even reject his friends. So then that alone would become as we as we know it once Yago wants of stealing the lamp. And that's when, yep, Jafar wants to becoming his own command for the genie. So now he becomes uh, the sultan. And actually uh, offered to bow to, to Jasmine and the sultan. Yeah, so he's taken over the entire palace of Aqaba. But with Aladdin already helping uh, Jasmine, sultan, and, 
and everybody, he must defeat Jafar from his from his entire games of, of becoming as we know it. And that's when, you know, he had his chance. You know, he beats him to his game. Because now, you know, already with disguises of becoming, you know, <laughs> anything he likes, you know, for Jafar, of course, he became a, a huge cobra. And then, after that, he, he later became a genie under another lamp. So this was part of Aladdin's trick to become the genie. So that way they can <laughs> they can actually dump the black lamp into the Cave of Wonders as we know it. So yeah. So now um, Aladdin finally got his last wish, and finally uh, the genie was set free. He finally um, left out of town, and everything was just back to normal as we speak. So now um, Aladdin's finally together with Jasmine, so he's now, you know, a handsome prince, so the movie ends. Yep, and I have to say, it was very fun. I love this movie a lot. I think it's definitely right up there with all the other Disney classics that I grew up with. I mean, yep, yeah, it's definitely up there with The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, but it's also up there with all the other classics that Disney had. Because I know my favorites, of course, has always been, you know, Alice in Wonderland, Lady and the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, and all the other films like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Pinocchio. But nevertheless, Aladdin was another favorite of mine. You know, I grew up with it. I remember seeing it uh, in theaters uh, twice. You know, once when it was an early screening that happens to be a work print, which means I get to see the animation in full form, I mean, yeah, which unfortunately half of the animation was complete, while the others was just, you know, hand drawn, already in, in its entire movement. So they didn't actually complete the animation yet, but it finally did uh, once I got to see the entire film during its uh, second time around. Yeah, <laughs> and since then I started seeing this movie almost every time. When, when I was little, because I started getting the VHS tape. I still have it today as we know it, and watched it many times. Never gets old, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's my all-time memory behind uh, Aladdin. And I always loved the film. That alone became so popular that it actually had a video game that was released by Sega Genesis and Super NES, too, yeah, and Super Nintendo. But of course, we had the Sega Genesis system a long time ago, so I remember we had the game. And we used to play that game a lot, <laughs> trying to get past all these levels. Yeah, everything from, you know, Aladdin trying to escape from the guards to uh, the Cave of Wonders and all of that. We had to try our best to beat those levels because some of the levels were pretty hard, as we know it. I mean, the Cave of Wonders was. So, yeah. <laughs> I love the soundtrack too. It was done by, as we speak, Alan Minken and Howard Ashman, along with Tim Rice, who took over after Ashman's death. Yeah, a lot of memorable songs, including uh, A Whole New World, yeah, very beautiful song, along with Arabian Nights, A Friend Like Me, Prince Ali, and <laughs> another favorite of mine, One Jump Ahead. Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, a lot of great songs there. Just so magical. Um, you just never forget about them. And plus, the animation of the film was just spectacular. You know, everything that's done by hand-drawn animation under a system called CAPS, which stands for Computer Animated Production System. Yeah, meaning that they use digital ink and paint system throughout the entire process of the cells that they use once it was hand drawn that they actually use that process to make the movie more spectacular than ever before and plus they even use uh, CGI for several of those scenes including the Cave of Wonders and some of the shots with the palace and I began to find out who actually did the CGI for this movie 
you know, in the mix with hand-drawn animation. It turns out it was done by the production team of Pixar. Yep, because ironically enough, Pixar will later went on to become, as we know it, the more successful animated studio of all time once it teams up with Disney, starting with the release of, as you know it, Toy Story in 1995. So they've been making a lot of films ever since. <laughs> yep, all done by uh, John Lasseter and all the rest of the team. Because even though he did do the film um, Fern Gully and the Last Wayne Forest, yeah, that was the first film that Rob Williams had went on to do the voice of Batty. This is the movie that definitely made him, you know, a star. <laughs> For him to do a lot of voice acting work. And that's pretty much what he could have done, you know, as far as the years have went. And I know he did with films like Robots and the Happy Feet films. Yeah. And if he was alive today, he probably would have continued to do some more animated films. And that would have been nice, too, for a change. Because he is indeed, you know, a very good actor and comedian. Yeah, just sad about what happened. Yeah, now, now that he's no longer with us. Yeah, and having to watch those outtakes that I saw on the Blu-ray brought me a tear to my eye. I mean, he did so many outtakes that I never thought he would do. That could have made it into the film, but of course, you know, they had to shorten it to 90 minutes, so that's why the film had to be as we know it. But it sure brings back memories to actually hear um, Bob Williams' voice again as the genie. And it's just really sad. I really miss him. But not only was this film largely successful but I almost felt that this movie was very underrated too because unfortunately even after this movie came out because they started getting sequels with Return of Jafar and Aladdin and the King of Thieves yeah because that's where they brought back Robin Williams after Dan Castaneda from The Simpsons yeah who did the voice of Homer Simpson to take over as a genie that's what leads to the conflicts with the studio because unfortunately yeah they the, the whole idea of this was that you know Rob Williams was already becoming a, a very successful uh, actor at the time you know with Good Morning and Vietnam who touched on pictures but they wanted to focus more on on Rob Williams success of, as being as we know it you know the actor who wants to be in voice of the genie because not only that, Ron Williams was already doing a film called Toys. Came out in December after uh, Aladdin was released in uh, November. So that alone is what leads to bigger problems. So that's why he couldn't um, return as the voice of Genie until you know the King of Thieves. Because I found out that you know he only returned as an apology, you know to to the folks at Disney. So yeah, once uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg had left and was replaced by Joe Roth and you know, gave him a public apology and so Williams finally accepted his offer since he was doing the film Jack in 1996. So now he got it. Yeah. <laughs> Took him some time. And they also had the TV series of course as we know it. Yep. And that was um, the show that aired on both CBS and the Disney Afternoon Block. And I used to watch this show a lot. And I hope someday Disney will finally get the chance to put that on DVD, if they ever can. Now that they're going to plan on releasing all the sequels that followed after the first movie. Yes, once again, Robin Williams did an awesome job playing the genie with all the thousand voices that he could take. I mean, he definitely is the main reason why this movie worked. Even though the movie basically what it, really what it was, a standard uh, fairy tale that Disney was coming up with. But of course, Genie isn't the only character that I love in the film. Um, I love uh, Aladdin, as well as Jasmine, Abu, Yago, the Sultan, yeah, even the guards too. <laughs> you know, they're yeah, especially one that was voiced by Jim Cummings. 
and of course Saint Jafar. Yeah, I thought the characters were amazing. You know, they they definitely work together as a team. And I thought, uh, you know, I always love Aladdin. You know, he was very heroic too, even though he is indeed you know a street rat. And and I thought Jasmine was very beautiful too as a princess. Yeah. So together, you know, they both spark chemistry, and they, they work together. And Abu, of course, is just basically a trusty sidekick, and very fun to deal with. Yeah, and he was voiced by Frank Welker. You know, he was just, <laughs> you know, screeching exactly like, you know, what a monkey would sound. Yeah, I, I never forget the, the screeching sound he does. <laughs> and, um... And of course, uh, Gilbert Gottfried you know, as Yago. I mean, he definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely a wise cracking talking parrot who goes around coming up with a lot of, a lot of you know, funny dialogue that he comes that he just, he's just made for. I mean, even though he's sort of, kind of upstaged by the genie himself, so it's funny how we have to end up having two comedians. But Yago was great. And, yeah, and, and Jafar, of course, um, was a very powerful villain. You know, Jonathan Freeman definitely did an awesome job doing the voice of Jafar. Because he later went on to do the voice of him and several others. Yeah, he even did it in all the video games. And, believe it or not, he even played a role in, as we speak, the Broadway musical of Aladdin. So that's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, definitely check out Aladdin. I mean, if you love Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and all the other Disney classics, I mean, you'll never get disappointed with this. Especially if you love Robin Williams, and I know I do. Because he always will be, as we speak, always memorable as the genie. Right there. <laughs> and he always will be remembered as one of my favorite actors and comedians, as we know it. So yes. So anyway, I give Aladdin five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.